Well, thanks for being here on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Can you believe that? Isn't that nuts? But it's here, so holiday season's here, and uh, fully enjoy that. We're in this series, and uh, the first thing is that Jesus knows you, and he wants you to know him. So as he, he knows you, he, it's more than he knows about you, it's more than he knows, he knows data, yeah, he knows your thoughts, and he knows your actions, and he knows your attitudes, he knows, your, he, he knows all that, but uh, if you're in Christ, it means he, he knows you relationally, and so he knows you, meaning he, he does love you, in fact, he more than loves you, he even likes you. Now, somebody going, really, Jesus even likes me? Knowing all that he does about me, he still likes me. Yeah, he does. I mean, if he was on Facebook, he would hit the like thing. And, you know, the thumbs, I don't think he's on Facebook, but if he was, if he was, it would be he likes, and that would be you. And if he likes you, uh, begin to learn to like yourself if you don't already. Now, I know that's a tough ask for some because uh, some of those thoughts of, of self, you're are, are quite deep, but he, he knows you, he wants you to know him, he wants you to want to know him, because if you don't want to know him, you won't know him. Here, here's the thing, that you can get to know him, he made it possible because a couple thousand years ago, he came from heaven to earth. You know, he eternally exists, and so it wasn't like he's a new, a new creation, but he, he came down from the heavens uh, became fully human. That's called the incarnation. We'll celebrate that in a few weeks at Christmas. And then what, sworn what's called, it's a theological term, but you should know this, called the hypostatic union. The hypostatic union just means now he is fully, fully God and he is fully man. And the two now are together, coexisting. 100% God, 100% man. I know mathematically it doesn't figure out, so if you pride yourself on math, you'll be confused on this one. If you teach math, this one doesn't teach. But it's true. There's certain things true about God that's not true anywhere else or about anything else. So um, he is fully human, fully divine. There is no mixture, no dilution of either nature, and he is one united person forever. I mean, just do some time with that. And the purpose of every Christ follower's life is to know him and to make him known. I mean, there's so much more to Christ to know. And he wants us to continue to know him more. When, when things take a, a wrong turn, see it as an opportunity to know him even more because you're probably going to need him even more. And for a lot of us, things go wrong enough or not the way we'd like to enough. It's another opportunity to get to know him because you do have to ask questions when you don't have the answers. And, and the, the why are huge questions. And like I said like a week or two ago, he may not give you the answer to it, and sometimes when that happens, it just is, you need to know me, you don't need to know more answers. And when you know him, you love him, to know him is to love him, but you also love others. Whenever you love God, you must love others. And, and don't you think that even in the church, we need to love him more because it, it shows by our lack of love, sometimes anyway, of, of other people that's in the church. I mean, can you imagine that, that even in, in not, not the just church, just any church, that there's people that don't get along within that body? Isn't that nuts? It's true, though, whether it's here or somewhere else. It's always that way. And I think it breaks God's heart. And so love him more, because when you do, you can't help but love others all the more. So we're in this, the, the seventh thing, or the who am I's of the Gospel of John, and this morning, we're going to get to the statement that Christ makes, I am the way and the truth and the life. And to get there, as I've been doing, there's this thing called context. Context is important because what's called context is king. Context determines meaning, meaning if you don't know context, you can make it mean anything you want it to mean. And and I, and I said, you know, we're all guilty of that sometimes, and let's minimize the guilt of that. It's so easy just to take a passage, take it apart from context, and try to apply it, and it'd be a misapplication. I go, we don't always get it right, but do the work 
of understanding context. So here we are and back in the Gospel of John, and he says, Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, what hour is that? Hour is crucifixion, right? We, he knew the time, the time had come. So we're, we're talking about the, the, the Last Supper. And he's sitting down with his disciples, and uh, he knew that the, the hour has come, the time was short, and he should depart out of this world to the Father. He knew what was around the corner. Christ is going to be arrested tonight. He is going to die tomorrow. He knows that. None of the other disciples knew that, so um, he's trying to let them know what's going to happen. Let me ask you something. If you were healthy tonight, but you knew you were going to die tomorrow, you knew that, what would you do tonight? You know, if, if this was your last living day on earth, or, your, or your, the last evening you're ever going to see on this earth, what would you do to, this evening? Here's the first thing we'd do. Go off diet, right? We're off diet. It doesn't matter anymore. And probably the second thing, you're going to gather around the people whom you love and who love you, and you're going to tell them some stuff maybe you've been waiting or wanting to say, but for whatever reason you didn't. Today's always a good day to tell people what you need to say, right? Because we don't always have the opportunity to say that because sometimes death visits us and we don't get that. No, my, I wish I would have. And it's tough sometimes. Uh, but that's what he's doing. He is eating with them, and he's, he's, he's giving some what's called last-minute instruction about things um, before he goes to his father. He says this, little children, I'm, I'm with you a little while longer. And you know, that's upsetting. They've been with him for three years. I mean, they have been tight. They've been close. They've been doing everything together. And he says, uh, just a little while longer. You shall seek me, and as I said to the Jews, for I am going, you can't come. So yeah, he's saying, uh, I am leaving you, I'm going somewhere, and you've been following me for three years, you can't follow me here. I Meaning you're going to be on your own. Whenever a group is now void of leadership, it creates confusion and, and fear, they don't know where to go. They've been depending upon this person to take them in a certain direction. They've learned to trust and, and, and to love, and now you're taken off. It's always that way, as it was in this circumstance. Peter wants to know where he's going, and, and Jesus replies, he says, uh, well, uh, where, where I go, you, you, you can't follow me now, but you, you'll follow me a little later. But that's not good enough. Peter wants to go now. He's, he's like us. We don't want later. We want now. And I don't want to follow. I, I want to be with. I want to come along. Because who knows? I, I may take a wrong turn or I may need something. And so, you know, why not now? But, but Jesus knows what's going on inside of their heart, doesn't he? Like he knows what's going on in my heart and my spirit right now. He knows what's going on inside of you right now. Sometimes we're not even aware of what's going on right now. Some of the deepest things confuse us. And we're like this. They might say, some of them, have you ever had what they call the blues? You know, you, you, your, your spirit's taking a dive. And you don't know why. Like, like nothing big, bad happened. There wasn't some, some news that really messed you up. Your kids or grandkids weren't off the chart. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. And actually, you know, you got a job, you're fairly healthy, your team won, but yet, you know, you've gone downhill. You know why? Have you ever wanted to have just a good cry? If you're a man, you go, no, uh-uh, not me. My wife, yeah, she likes to have a good cry, but not me. No guy has ever wanted to see a movie to cry, right? That's not why we go to movies. We don't watch football games to have a good cry. No, but, but 
Sometimes we're confused by what's going on inside. Why, why, I, I don't know. But he knows all about this stuff. So he tells them this. We begin the next chapter, chapter 14. He says, let not your heart be troubled, because he knew their heart was troubled. Let, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and, and you know the way where I am going. Never heard that passage before? Probably whenever, uh, well, oftentimes when I do a funeral, that'll be a passage that I use. And it's there to provide uh, like comfort and, and strength and assurance. Yeah, uh, he left, but that doesn't mean this is the end. In fact, things are going to get a whole lot better because he went to prepare a place for us. There's a Keith Green song. Some of you don't even know who he is. He was a great singer, musician, uh, late 70s. He died in, uh, I think it was July of 1982, of a, of a plane crash with, I believe, two of his kids were on that plane with him down in Texas. I remember I ushered at his, one of his last concerts uh, down in South Carolina and woke up one morning to listen to the radio and Keith Green has, has just died. But one of the lyrics of his songs is that uh, if Christ went to prepare a place for us and he's been working on that place for 2,000 years, we must be living in a garbage dump to compare to what's going on up there. Now, I don't know if his theology is correct. I mean, I don't know if he's still working on it, but just understand that Whatever we have waiting for us since Christ went to prepare a place for us is a whole lot better. And you may be living in a paradise right now, but it's a whole lot better. It makes everything look down here look pretty cheap. And he's saying, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, uh, strengthen your heart, that your heart isn't, isn't in a troubled place. He said, if, if it weren't so, I, I'd tell you, but that's where I've gone. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I, I'm coming back for you. Really, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving, but I want you to know why I'm leaving. I'm, I'm working on something, and it's for you, and I'm going to come back for you someday so you can be where I'm going to be. Get it? I don't, I don't know how much they got it. You, you would have think they go, oh, yeah, that's incredible. I'm loving the sound of that. I didn't know. I didn't know that's why you were going. I didn't know that. We didn't know you were going to come back. You didn't tell us that. But here's Thomas's response. He, he said, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? Isn't that just like a human being? God gives us this, this, this rich, encouraging, wonderful thought, and, and we miss it. Well, no, we, we don't know. Here's the statement that Christ makes concerning himself. He says, I am the way. Tommy, you say you don't know the way? If you knew me, you would know the way. Because I am the way. 
I'm not the map. I'm not the chart. But I am the way. I am the way. And, and he fouls up, meaning there's more to it than just that. Yeah, I am the way, but, but, but in addition to that, I am, I am the truth. And in addition to that, uh, I am the life. You understand? And, and, and let me even add more. No one comes to the Father but, but through me. So if you want to get to where I am going or to get where you want to be one day, it, it must be through me. I must hit him like a ton of bricks. You want to know the way, you're looking at him. This statement is, is so important. He says, I, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Meaning there's, there's not another way. There's a big deal here between the word A and the word V. For grammar people, uh, the word A would, they call it maybe an, an indefinite article, but the word V is a definite article, meaning the, the one and only. There's not another way. This is restricted. This is exclusive. It's, it's me or nothing. If there was some other way, even one other way, you have to understand that, that his death, the crucifixion, would not have been necessary. If you can get to the Father and, well, one way is through me, Jesus Christ. Well, the, the other way is, and then yet there's another way, and so you have options. There is no option. He only died because it was absolutely necessary. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have died. Father wouldn't have sent him if there was another way. That wouldn't have been love at all. That would have been cruelty. It's not that you can go this way and that way. You, you, you can't arrive at the same place. You, you can't. There's just one way. It messes us up. If I were to ask you, how many ways can we get to Fort Wayne from here? I said, well, get on 24, take a right, you'll get there. Or jump on the interstate. You'll get there. Or you want to take the scenic route, go up nine, hit Columbia City, take, hit US 30, take a right. You'll get there. Or if you don't mind how long it takes or how much it costs, it's almost endless. I can go to Detroit, you know, it, it, come down from, you can do it all kinds of ways. If you're looking to get married and you're not very particular, how many people are out there? It's just about endless. As long as they can fog a mirror, good enough for me. I think you're it. <laughs> See, a large part of the gospel's offense is you don't get an option. Not one. It's, it's Jesus or nothing. And, and for lots of folks, that just, that just grates on them. See, today we like to think, but, you know, everybody's different. And so you have to account, you have to accommodate for the differences. Different than me, and so, and so if you just did one way, that's so restrictive, and that's not loving. And, you know, God created us different, so... There needs to be these differences. Did you know that we're much more alike than we are different? Sure, there's some differences, sure. There's uniqueness, well, sure there is. But for the most part, we're so much more alike. 
than different. It's, it's the one and only way that works. And so if you reject him, uh, you don't get to see the Heavenly Father. Just the way it is. I mean, don't, don't think that, well, any, any religion, it's just a different entrance, but they all come to the same destination. No, it doesn't. What do you mean? You mean if, 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 I, if I turn Muslim, if I go the way of, of Allah, I don't get to see the, the Heavenly Father? This is tough. I don't know if you know any Muslims or if you care for Muslims. If, you're, if you deeply have a friendship with the Muslims. There's millions of them. And it sounds like, how dare you? How dare you say that? That, that Muslims won't find a loving Heavenly Father. It's just another name for the same being. No, it's not. How about by way of the Buddha? That doesn't work either. Or any other of the religions that are out there. See, when Jesus makes this claim, it's huge. And it, it, it messes with us. But if there was any other way, his death would have been unnecessary. And we're here to proclaim that he is the way the only way. It's not by way of works of righteousness. That's not the way either. You, you can't be good enough. I don't care how good you are. You can't keep a list, stick to the list, and you're doing pretty, pretty well, and that should be good. Or we hear people, we hear people say, you know, so-and-so got a really good heart. Well, we're glad for that. But even people with really good hearts can't arrive there apart from Jesus Christ. And that's why, uh, you know, for centuries now, we've, we've written the Bible in as many different languages that we can and have tried to get them in the hands of as many people as we can. That's why David Klein, who was up here, and his wife and his family were overseas for a number of years. Because their heart just broke. Because there isn't another way, folks. It's Jesus or nothing. And Jesus doesn't stop there. He says, I am the truth. I am the way, and that's enough, but you have to understand this also. I am the, meaning, I don't just say truth. I don't just live truth. I don't just uh, act truth. Uh, I, I am. I embody truth. I am, I am the source of truth. And today, we like to think, what the hell? There's your truth, and then there's my truth. You see, people are different. So there, there's different truths. And we have to be okay with that because just but people are unique and so there's unique truths. And any truth that competes with the gospel and the words of Christ is not true. Regardless of how much you believe it or want it to be so. There are competing claims to truth, but there's really only one, what I call big T truth. See, big, what I call big T truth is true for everyone, every culture, and every age forever. This truth never changes because truth can't. Other things can. We, we discover one thing and then another thing. We thought this was 
bad to eat. Then we discover later on that it actually it's not so bad or this was okay, but it's not okay. And well, that was a, a truth or a, a factual thing. To discover only a little later on that not, not so much. Well, gosh, too late for me because I was uh, eating that or ingesting that. But th that's not what we're talking about, what I call the big T truth. It's, it's, always, it's always that way. It'll be that way a hundred years from now if Christ doesn't. It'll be that way. It's always that way for all eternity, even in the heavens. Right now, what are the impeachment hearings about, or what should they be about? The discovery of truth, right? Who really did say whatever? I don't know about you, but that stuff drives me nuts. I think that's the first amen I got in years, but thank you. I just get the snippets, the condensed version. I mean, some of you may have the, the time and sit there and ingest it all. I think it'd give you an upset stomach. I'm sitting there. Here's my other thought. With all this going on, is anything else gotten done? That, that's what I'm thinking. Are we actually paying for this? But I guess, I, 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 I don't know. See, we've all been lied to or deceived, haven't we? Any exceptions to that? Maybe you're in kindergarten, you know, maybe not. But most of us, by whatever age, we've been lied to, we've been deceived on more than one occasion. And that's why we hold back now. We hold our heart back because we find it hard to trust, don't we? A lot of us do, some don't. Some have accepted, you know, I've been lied to, I've been deceived, I'll be lied to and deceived again, but I will continue to trust, I will continue to love. I will not guard my heart in such a way that I cannot love nor receive love because that would be a, a violation of the great commandment. Don't do that. Uh, I've experienced that as well. I don't want to say it's okay, but it hasn't caused me to fail to love and trust. What I call, uh, when people violate that, I call them stingers, not knockout punches. It's okay, in one sense. You shouldn't do that. But we've all been on the receiving end, and in fact, who knows, maybe we've even done it. Maybe not out and out lied, but maybe we've deceived. Maybe we weren't even aware. I, I don't know. Now, you know you shouldn't lie or deceive. One day, I had a husband come to me, knowing he shouldn't lie or deceive. I said, Rick, I don't know what to do. Uh, the other day, my wife tried on a certain article of clothing and asked him, does this make me look fat? And I hesitated. And in that, in that hesitation, she said, you do, don't you? If you wouldn't have, you would have come out right out and said, but you, you waited, and so you had to think it over, didn't you? I mean, the guy it ruined his day, like his weekend, his week, maybe the month. And I'm trying to help you guys out, okay? I'm just trying to keep your marriages intact. It's almost like a no-win question. But if you haven't thought it out, you may come under the same situation my friend did. So, if you are ever asked that question, you have to be Johnny on the spot. You have to be quick. Does it make me that? No! Well, no! Never! You, you, you have to be just like that. But then you're thinking, but, but what if it's a lie? Because I don't want to be lying. My wife, I love her. I get it. So you don't say this, but you think it so you can say it, and so there's some truth to it. You say, no. Here, what you're doing, you're thinking this. You can't say it. You're thinking it. No. Thinking not to some people. Okay? No, you're thinking not to a blind person.
No. Not to someone with cataracts or glaucoma. No. Not from a distance, like a mile. No, not in total darkness, you know. No. But then you're going to go, oh. I feel like it's not the whole truth. I feel like it's like some deception. I know. But can I say this? God understands, okay? <laughs> God understands. And you have to understand that sometimes wisdom prevails over truth, okay? But when Jesus says whatever, it's total, absolute, 100%, no deception, all the way, truth. His last part, you know, I am the life. He, he is the source of, of the spiritual life, of eternal, everlasting life, and thereby he is, he is the dispenser. It, it's a free gift he gives to those who come to him, that trust in him. Your, your inner being, your spirit, your soul, which is the most important part of you. Which is more important, my body, the physical, or my soul, the spiritual, that which is seen? which we're so concerned about, or the unseen, which we should be more concerned about than the seen. And you know this, the, the, the spiritual, the unseen, the internal, the inner being is so much more important than the body. Here again, I'm not saying the body's not important. I, I would never say that. Of course it's important. But in comparison, it doesn't even come close. So we don't like how it looks. We don't like how it feels. Well, yeah, okay. Give it some attention. Maybe it's ill. Well, yeah, go get it taken care of. But what's the wonderful thing is the most important part of you can't be touched. It, it can't die. It, it lives forever. So when he says, I am the life, I am the dispenser of this life, which for Christ's followers will never end, which never has to be diseased. It never has to take it, never has to. It could, but it never has to on some of those things. So here's the result of Christ saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. And all that he said, we continue on in John chapter 14, and the result is this. Now, we just said that I am leaving, but I am leaving you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the, is the great comforter. I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit. The next thing he says is this. He goes, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives. That's so important. Lots of times people try to live by the world's peace. The peace that's out there by those that don't, don't know and love the God that we know and love. They're trying to get peace as well as us, right? We all, that's why we say we're, we're so much more the same than we are different. They want peace too. Everybody wants peace. Everyone wants that, that intercontentment. We're all looking for that. But don't live it according to well, their standards, the way that they get peace. See, the world's peace is circumstantial. It's fickle. If, if circumstances change, if lives change, well, your peace could go bye-bye. Jesus' peace isn't like that. It's the peace you can have now and forever. Let your hearts not be troubled. nor let it be fearful. Even in hard times. I'm not looking for hands, but anybody here gone through a hard time? See, I'm not looking. It could be that everybody here 
in some way that's going through a hard time, yeah, we come and we laugh and we smile, and, and that's okay. We're not here to dump everything on everybody else. But if the truth were known, if you, if you really would take the time to listen and, and I trusted you, I'd tell you things about my heart that maybe I've told no one. And maybe you'd be surprised of what I'm carrying around. See, troubled hearts are pandemic. And hearts that are afraid or fearful, the same. And Jesus says, because I am the way and the truth and the life, right now, your heart doesn't have to be troubled. It doesn't have to be scared. You don't have to be fearful. And you don't have to worry. I don't know if you can tell yourself or say to yourself, I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm not going to be scared anymore about whatever. Uh, tell yourself, you know what? I am done worrying. Hasn't done me any good. I'm just done with that. And because, because Christ left us his peace, and since he left it with us, why wouldn't I live in that? A peace that's not circumstantial. A peace that doesn't go up. A peace that doesn't leave. A peace that's always there. And so I can walk through life, and it's not that I don't engage with the things that aren't pleasant. I do. I don't have my, my eyes covered that I don't know what's going on in, in the world or my life. I engage. I, I understand what's going on with opioids and the shootings and what's going on over in Hong Kong. Uh, impeachment stuff. I, I, I know. But I don't let it take me to a place that's not healthy. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live, although this stuff is around me, I'm going to live like I'm walking through, I'm strolling through a park. It's true, but it can't touch me because that's where God's peace is at and that's why he's the way and the truth and the life and only he has made peace possible see when you trust in the way and the truth and the life peace, peace is the wonderful byproduct and I want to say that's right here right now and that is the truth. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you right now. We're talking to you right now. And Lord, we acknowledge that you are the way. There is no other way. And the truth and the life, there is no other truth. There is no other route to eternal life. And we can only get to the Heavenly Father through you. We know that. And God, since we know it, we're all the more going to live it. Not that we haven't been living it, but we're going to live it all the more. And when we do that, we're going to grab a hold of the peace which you left for your people, whom we are. We're going we're gonna to figure out how to grab a hold of this peace, and we're not going to let go because peace is one of the most precious things we could ever attain. And you gave it up for us. We can have it now. Now would be a really good time. So we thank you right now, uh, Jesus, for being 
the way, the truth, and the life.